So, and uh, I'm kind of a fallback <laughs> presentation here. Um, I plan to do this anyway, but more like for the next uh, meetup. Uh, but I'm happy to do it now, why not? And I want to like a little bit uh, explain how we did our prototype doing the uh, hackathon and uh, just the title, create your Langchain AI MVP super quick with uh, Next.js. So feel free to interrupt. I prefer like have a more interactive uh, discussion. So feel free to, to ask questions during. So who, who, who am I? I'm Martin Müller. I'm originally from Germany, uh, as you can hear. Uh, just moved to Portugal beginning of the year. And yeah, I totally love it here. The weather is amazing, you know. Uh, the food is amazing, the people are amazing, the community is amazing, everything is pretty cool. I live a little bit outside Costa de Caparica, so uh, happy that I don't have to be like every day in Lisbon. <laughs> so only to those nice events here, so that's pretty awesome. And yeah, usually I'm doing more like AWS DevOps, so I'm a freelancer. And I have clients around the world uh, doing stuff on them, uh, like DevOps stuff uh, with AWS, which is pretty fun. Uh, mainly with startups, um, so that's the reason as well why I, I, I totally enjoy working with startups. So I uh, joined a startup myself some months ago. I guess I forgot a slide to put in, Oda? No, I did. I think I did. Yeah, Hello Casa is an online uh, ag uh, property agency platform, so pretty similar to Idealista. Uh, and yeah, it's pretty fun so far. So I think for us, the uh, challenge is more like market fit. As you can imagine, it's not the only one. So what is our... USP, you know, and uh, yeah, finding product market fit. I think that's, but it's a really cool learning and definitely worth it. And I had ex opportunity to play more with cool technologies like Next.js, you know, and, and applying my AWS uh, knowledge. Okay, so the agenda, um, I just want to tell a bit about this uh, MVP we was doing during the hackathon, what the idea was behind it. And then shortly about the Gigaton team we had there, we have uh, one uh, team member here, that's pretty cool. Uh, I said, Osama too, oh cool, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and uh, I then introduced shortly the uh, technologies which are used there, or oh, yeah, are used there, uh, which I think it's important to tell about and why I like them. Um, then I do a quick, uh, how do you, how actually you can do like super easy with like one click, uh, in Vercel, uh, do your own uh, uh, starting and have something running and uh, start from there actually. Um, and uh, a demo at the end, and we are just demo the uh, MVP we developed there and some reflecting at the end. Cool, uh, and about the business uh, AI MVP idea. So I was like already thinking some uh, months ago uh, how, how a struggle it is for, a non, uh, for an expert to to do residency stuff, uh, even as for me, uh, for luck, for luck, I have a Brazilian wife, <laughs> you know, at least uh, with the language, that is fine. So, but I think it would be cool to kind of help uh, people who want to live here, you know, and as well on Facebook or the Future Founder WhatsApp group or whatever, like every day someone is asking something about residency. So it seems like uh, the experience is not clear in the internet, you know. Usually, um, how you uh, get your information, if you want to get some Portugal information, you go on a website about Portugal residency, you answer some questionnaires, very simple, and then you need to put your email and then you get contacted. That's not the best experience, actually. I think you can make it more nice with AI, you know, getting already some answers. And of course, just with that, you will not make money, so somehow you have to make money, so why not use it to as well involve like a real people, you know, like a, a, a profession uh, who can then like help you further, like uh, apply, uh, have the documents ready and uh, everything, you know, taking basically the next step and as well validating actually what you are uh, talking there with AI because I mean, we are all probably trusting a lot AI and, but it's still uh, most people don't trust so much the AI. So I think we still need to involve real people. We not just can can like the, make the, let the AI do uh, uh, their magic, you know, and think that's fine. I think it's still good to at least in this transition period or what, uh, to have some real people uh, involved. And as well, this will generate really qualified leads, you know. You can imagine the professional can see the summary, what the, what the person wants, and maybe even you probably have different categories in uh, residency stuff. I don't know too much, so to be honest. And uh, you can maybe forward already with help of the AI to the right accountant and stuff like that. I think there's a lot of potential to generate some qualified leads there. 
and uh, yeah, as I said, the uh, accountant can then see the shared summary. So yeah, we kind of played around with that idea uh, during that uh, days. And yeah, here's the team actually. So uh, Vitas is here too. Please stand up, Vitas. Show us. <laughs> so or just yeah, um, Osama is here too over there. So feel free to connect them with them later. And yeah, that's myself. So yeah, I think yeah, it was up to three members you could have for those uh, Gigaton teams. Uh, shortly to the uh, technology parts we are using there, as I mentioned before, like Next.js, it's quite a, yeah, what is Next.js? I think it's a pretty cool way for creating uh, websites in general. So it itself, it uses React, uh, React TypeScript, but as well, it does more, it's not just even React, it can provide you already with a sophisticated way of how you can create routes and uh, yeah, it does a lot of stuff for you and you easily can deploy it to Vercel. So it's like really easy to set up and to deploy uh, with Vercel. So uh, really cool. Um, as well, like a Tailwind CSS, which is just a better CSS. So uh, for don't know who don't know what is Tailwind CSS, I think what's pretty cool, if, if you did some HTML CSS stuff, it was, the main part was always annoying that you had separated files, yeah? You had a file for HTML, you had a file for CSS, and if you are lucky, uh, you are pointing with the class name to the, to the correct part there in the CSS files. This is bullshit, yeah? So this is really nice, yeah? You have like directly in the HTML, you define what your CSS is, you know? And this is uh, just game changing. I, I, think it, I think it is standard, so pretty much. It becomes a standard of everything. <laughs> And uh, it's, it's very like well sophisticated uh, how the keywords uh, like are chosen and everything. Yeah. <laughs> These questions that jump in the middle. Yeah. I don't know Tailwind CSS, but when I read it, it's very similar to Perl. Yeah, I mean, they are just like reinventing and inspiring itself, right? So, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, probably. And <laughs> if you have like a nice IDE, you can even see what, uh, when you uh, hoover over it, you can see what CSS it produces. You know, it's, it's, it's awesome. I think it's a nice way to kind of learn CSS as well. So <laughs> if you, if you did, uh, do like me, I did so, so far. Because I come more from the backend side, actually. You know, I'm all, my, all, all, all years uh, more backend guy, and, but with like React and Tailwind CSS, it's super fun to do frontend stuff, totally. Yeah, and as well, uh, it's like super easy to wire in Langchain to, to Next.js, which I want to show later. And I think Langchain, Langchain is a nice way of how you can interact with all those LLMs. And, uh, and chunk in additional stuff, like when you need to create your knowledge base, like with a vector database or fine tuning, uh, and much more, much, much more. I mean, Langchain uh, has a huge uh, offering of uh, cool utili utilities. Uh, there was some stuff more, but this like the, the, the main thing I think was the worst to mention. Okay, so just uh, let me show how the how easy this can be let's just, just to start. So let's say you want to, uh, you have an idea, you want to try it out. So what I will do, just uh, type in, in Google, not even ChatGPT, but <laughs> that's a shame actually. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, because Vessel has this nice... Uh, Library of templates. You see, uh, okay, you can like compare them with each other. I click on it and I see what what uh, technologies it's using. Uh, I totally like it. I just click here, deploy. You know, it's super convenient. It checks out to your GitHub repository. You just uh, click here, create. I did it before, so I'm not doing it again. Oh, is it open? No. So it will check it out, it creates some other stuff and even like deploys it already to Vercel. So it will give you an URL at, URL at the end, which uh, you can run and you have then running it or, already uh, uh, on Vercel. So I think that's uh, really awesome. Then you can go to your GitHub repository. I think I'm just doing this. Next JS chat, I think that's right. Um, so make uh, sure everything is working. It's running on Vercel. It's running on the cloud. Uh, it's running locally. Yeah, so you have usually the instructions here. You make sure it runs. 
uh, it runs, and then you can just start tweaking it, you know? I think that's really awesome, this way of uh, developing something new. You start with something working and then slowly uh, changing it. And how you can, if you want, can bring in um, Langchain. You go to the uh, routes here. Where is it? API, chat. So here is like the part where it will speak with uh, your LLM. Uh, of choice. So here for now, this is like just using OpenAI. Yeah, it uh, uses uh, is a streaming text response. But and and here is like the the point where you can start to do to some Langchain stuff or Autogen if you want. <laughs> why not uh, do some Autogen stuff if they do TypeScript? That's why I like <laughs> that before. Yeah, I think that's a really great way to to start with it. Question changing. Yeah, okay, that's a demo. And now I'm showing like our little, yeah? Uh, if you have to pay for I know uh, they have like a very generous free tier actually, super generous. So we were actually, we was running in one of the free tier limits. They're using a, what was it? A, 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 key, a key value store. I think it's just a Redis or something for this example. And you could only make like 3,000 requests. And uh, we was like hitting that, I think, like one hour before it was finished, the uh, hackathon. So so, we, uh, so then we just needed to spin up another one from another account. I think it was from Osama and then was pointing to that one. So, But the, the free tier is super generous. You can do very much with it. And if you get to a point uh, where people start using it and per perhaps paying for it, yeah, you always can look for alternatives and to, to reduce the costs, you know. But uh, I think it's a really good way to, to start out. And yes, that's the um, little uh, project we did, I'm just running it locally. I didn't check if it's still working online. Let's see, 3000, that looks good. So here, so it's pretty much like a chat GPT. Oh, it's like, oh, it was like a little delay, right? Okay. Um, pretty much like this from this uh, template I was uh, checking out. It's just very simple, very uh, similar to chat GPT. Yeah, so we have like some templates here, what you want to ask. And I can ask it uh, some questions for my residency and soon it will like, uh, suggest to me that uh, I should reach out to uh, one of our professionals. Let's see if it's still working. Okay, good. Do you have a specific job offer? Are you planning? Yeah, just saying here. I have a job, so I will speak a little bit with it. I have a job. So the Documents ready. No, nothing so far. Important. And now at this point, we have some questions here. It will re uh, recommend to reach out to a professional to help you further. It's just a very simple submit button. You can put some additional notes there. Uh, I don't know, like a ASAP. And this will uh, actually store in the database uh, that we have like a request here from a customer. And uh, now our uh, professionals can review that. I think it was here. Very, very simple, basic uh, view here just. Uh, um, just, uh, yeah, so the user ID from the user, the chat, the progress and uh, some notes. And you can even like click on it and you can see then the, uh, the uh, summary of the chat, uh, the, the chat itself. Yeah, can it see that? And then uh, continue. So. So that's already it. So that's just some reflecting. I think uh, working with AI on MVPs is really fun especially with this combination to try to make something useful. I think that, that's exciting. Um, yeah, why not try out Next.js uh, in combination with Vercel and Langchain or Autogen we heard about uh, to, to start stuff. And always when you want to learn something or you know try something, 
Start with a boilerplate which works, because it's much easier to work on something what works. Yeah, if you change it a little bit, get it more in this direction you want. Like if it's not working, it's kind of easy to know what was the reason and uh, learn from that. Yeah, and that's like a really really nice way to do it like this. And if you if you think if you like this idea, so we had some people uh, oh they like that idea and uh, want to get it further about Portugal Residency AI, reach out to me and uh, yeah, let's collaborate. <laughs> Maybe I'm even happy, I think uh, Vitas was like uh, suggesting we could make it more like to our community project or something. Why not, <laughs> you know? Yep, that's it, thank you very much. Thank you, Martin, so yeah. <laughs> Please. Great, great talk, Martin, thanks. Um, I'm assuming the next step is to hook it up with some uh, documentation, right, for RAG. Yeah, yeah, so or... I scrape I, the, I don't know, residency document pages. Yeah, yeah exactly, and yeah, yeah, build your knowledge base, basically, right? Yeah. So this is... That would this, be super We still have to do, actually. I should, so far, it's just some sophisticated uh, GP, uh, GPT prompts, not so much like a knowledge base, really, but... Uh, yeah, yeah, totally. To start with that, and uh, yeah. Uh -huh. Cool. Cool. So I can, maybe I can just shout a bit. Not because of the camera. <laughs> uh, it's being recorded just for that, yeah. So, so um, w w um, wouldn't this just live um, more um, discoverable in, uh, in ChatGPT as a GPT? Discussable? What, what do you mean? Like, the more discoverable. Um, you, because you, you could sort of keep building on this like as a separate project, but, but you could also do the exact same thing within a GPT. So, so I'm just yeah, yeah, totally. wondering if you, yeah. if you I mean, thought about that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, usually what you should do, I guess, you start in a kind of niche. You know, you usually, when you work on MVPs, it's, it's advisable to start in kind of niche, have the scope really like... Uh, small as possible, little as possible, make a really nice uh, user experience perhaps, and if that's working, you know, and gets interested, and uh, even you generate some revenue, you should, you can expand the, uh, yeah, it, it takes maybe, yeah, I mean, or not just Portugal, perhaps other countries or, or something like that, or other areas. Ah, sorry, maybe I was unclear. Like, uh, okay. I meant like sort of what OpenAI released like last month, those sort of mini GPTs yeah, within yeah, yeah. OpenAI. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it's sort of, I, I'm starting to wonder, like, yeah, yeah. should you do this outside of that or like? Yeah, that, that's a really good question. I think yeah, we wanted to look into that. Uh, it would be awesome if you could just like leverage uh, GPTs for that, you know? I mean, that would make much more sense to me. I, I, I didn't play too much around with it yet, but I guess what it's still missing uh, that you can, because that's like a really important part here, that you can contact a professional. I'm not sure if GPTs can do that, or maybe with some tricks or something. But I think that will be important. I think you can, but like I think yeah. it's complicated. But I think yeah. I think it's yeah. the direction, right? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I say totally. Yeah, do it with GPTs if you can. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Hi here, sir. Yeah. Hi. Thank you for the great talk. Uh, thank you. If. Uh, People here have ideas for MVPs. Uh, uh, how do you envision the collaboration being, you know, payment, revenue, whatever? How, yeah. how is that done objectively? <laughs> yeah, that's a tough question, actually. I mean, usually, actually, uh, it's, I think you should not worry about this stuff too much. It's, it makes more sense to see if it's really a good idea start to work together with those people you have in mind to see if it's working out, get some attraction there. I mean, you have, anyway, a lot of learnings, you know? I think that's totally worth it already. And uh, if it's like really become something, yeah, worry about it. <laughs> so, yeah, I have no idea, uh, really, uh, how you can uh, collaborate on that. Mm. I'm a huge fan, like uh, everyone like treated equal, kind of, you know, so when you do a company or something like that, and uh, not just, I prefer to have like co-founder, not just solo uh, something, I think that's pretty good, but I think it's good to, to uh, how to say, complementary each other, yeah, so 
And with this idea, I mean, there's this big part with those professionals, you know, um, this would be, uh, if you like have like some connection to professionals or stuff like that, would be really useful, you know, stuff like that. And marketing, I guess, and yes, yeah. <laughs> How, how available are you? I mean, are you working all the time? Do you have time yeah. for, uh, how, how do we set up to, you know, yeah. sit down with you and talk? Yeah. And how much time would you have yeah, available? Yeah, actually, it's a good question. Yes, I work all the time. <laughs> I could, um, really happy to have my sogros with me, you know, because with our, with our little children and so, they're helping out a lot. Uh, yeah, I think most important is that you have fun when you work on stuff like that. So you should see that you have a nice work-life balance. And uh, so that you enjoy what you're doing, and then you are most productive. So it's kind of hard to narrow it down to uh, concrete hours per week or something. But yeah, I think most important that you have fun doing it, and it gives you energy, you know, and you have your learnings. I mean, this is a great reward already. So <laughs> kind of getting around your question. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Martin. Um, so, um, one quick question. I mean, since you mentioned um, that you can actually uh, deploy very easily uh, that chat, have you considered like um, getting like an image as an input, so to say, like a scanned passport, so you can actually extract things from it? Um, uh, not not considered it yet, but why not? You know, it's a, it's really what I mean. You try to kind of try to have so less features as possible, MVP, minimal viable pro, uh, product. Uh, and then you'd kind of try to get a little user base and uh, see if they are willing to pay for it and uh, kind of try to get from them what they want, if they, if, what feature you implement next, because I think you can do so much stuff with AI. It's really hard to, to navigate there. So I think, I think really you should, Focus on like some few basic ideas that go from there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Uh, it's not a question. It's sort of just like a comment on how to bring that a little further. Um, <laughs> I mean, what's nice to see also is like sometimes you have a lot of things which seem more of like a wrapper around or just a GPT. Um, yeah, yeah. So the more you fine tune it, the, the better, the more relevant responses you'll get. Yeah. So if you did deploy something, that would be kind of cool to be able to scrape at the same time, have an agent in the background scraping yeah, yeah. like yeah. the latest law, yes. canceling the NHS, so you can have yeah. that either popping up the top of the screen or Pretty much. coming in when they ask a relevant question. Yeah. Or maybe the more clients you have, you have like a network effect and you can have people give testimonials and then you can be like, you know, two out of three users have said that they contacted the SDF. They weren't able to get around that, but they paid yeah. 300 euros to this one shady guy, yeah. and yeah. then they got their appointment. Just, yeah. you know, like, yeah, awesome. more relevant stuff, because otherwise the, the GBT nature will just give you, like, kind of generalized yeah. responses. So yeah, that yeah. kind of input, that kind of fine-tuning on... Yeah, yeah. I mean, fine-tuning and uh, vector base. You need both, I think, uh, yeah. to, to make it really, a really nice knowledge base. Yeah, like, yeah. Sound like it's really talking to you, yeah. that'd be... Yeah, exactly. And I think that's like the, really the main differentiator. It needs to be an awesome experience when people are asking questions there, you know, because there are already so many questionnaires out there. And yeah, why not? Actually, it's a good idea to, because actually they are, um, I think they are pretty much on the point. I tried some of them, you know, you can put some stuff there. Uh, I think, and, and they are generating exactly then elite, yeah, when you press on the button. And if you use AI here, yeah, they're not always generating a lead because maybe the person is already happy with the, uh, what the AI is saying, so doesn't need to any further help. Yeah, so, uh, but if then you need a help and have a very nice experience there, it's an amazing lead, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Thanks.